Thank you, Kate, for sharing um, that perspective, too, on reinvesting in the community. So we've heard about how to reinvest in the community, how to reinvest in female entrepreneurs, how to reinvest in equity. All these are very important. None of these can happen unless you are also reinvesting in yourself. So to round us out and um, tell us a little bit more about how to think about that, we're going to um, close our lunch with Sherry Shaw. Sherry Shaw is UNCW College of Health and Human Services Assistant Dean of Student Success, which is one of 25 hats that she wears. She is, um, so in her role at the college, she provides leadership management and advocacy for student services and programs at CHHS. In her downtime, she also manages a small business, SherryNicole.co, which focuses on professional coaching and academic consultations. She has a podcast called Black Women Working. She co-hosts a networking group called Three Ladies in Wilmington. Um, she does a long litany of other things in our community and serves as a true connecting resource. So I wanna welcome Sherry Shaw to the stage to tell us about investing in ourselves. Good afternoon. There we go. This is going to be interactive. We're going to have a good time, OK? So I am excited and delighted to be with you today. We have reached the end of this Leadership Accelerator, and I know that I stand between you a full inbox of emails, <laughs> some phone calls to make, probably even a nap, and hopefully a happy hour early right after this. So I promise to be authentic, Intentional, but brief. All right? All right. So the way I see it, I'm the anchor on this Wilmington Wilma Leadership Accelerator mile relay race. Right? So in the first lap, we heard from Tracy around inclusion. Second lap, Jennifer on entrepreneurship. Third lap, Kate took us around community. And so now we need to make sure that we understand that all three of those things are important and true. We must not forget ourselves as we run that leadership race. So collectively and collaboratively, I'm gonna grab the baton and take us home to the finish line, focusing simply on you. Y O U. So let's go, all right? So my plan is to share some of the best advice I've heard from family, from my 20 plus years in educational leadership and in the private sector. A brief glimpse in me, you'll see that I'm a servant leader, right? So those leadership traits are empathy, healing, listening, growing community, and building people up. So what we're going to do on this last lap is to remember what we do, how to build people up, and enjoy the process as we hit that finish line. I'm going to leave you with three points today, and we're going to jump right on in. The first point, find your thing or reclaim your thing, OK? So you can tell I'm animated, right? And I love interaction. So I'm going to ask you to yell out your thing soon. But before you do, I'm going to share my thing. My thing is running. I love it. I run two miles or 30 minutes every day. It's non-negotiable. Sometimes I run a little longer on Fridays. But three years ago, I couldn't do my thing. I mean, I'm talking full on back and knee pains. Every time I thought about running, I couldn't even begin to lace up. And I could talk myself out of running before I even got out of bed. But three years ago, I also got sick. I got sick and tired of the inaction but the desire. I got sick of the physical and the mental challenges. I got sick of cheering all my friends on as they crossed their finish line and then coming home feeling defeated. Well, my great grandmother, she says, when you get tired of making excuses, you'll begin to make progress. And so I did. I went to the doctor, I got my levels checked, I got my screenings, and I began to make that stride back to doing my thing. So I ask you, what is your thing? What is the thing you need to claim or reclaim 
that will make you a better person or professional. All right. I warned you. Here's the interactive part. So yell out your thing. Go. Cheers. Cheers. Did you say drinking? OK, sure. Happy hour. OK, OK, yes, yes. <laughs> Give me one more. Yoga. Yoga, Pilates, bowling. You could even say a nap, because we don't get enough of those. Don't you miss those adult naps? Right. My point is, find the time to center yourself back into your day. Carve out just that little bit of time. Allowing yourself to have a little piece of you before you give it all away will make you a better professional, a person. It'll make you healthier physically, mentally, and spiritually. You'll find yourself more focused and, yes, even more confident. All right? Point one, find your thing or reclaim your thing. Point number two, find your sponsors, your mentors, and your squad. Now, I have some squads in here. I see Chez in here. I see my Wilma leadership team, Las Jefes in here. I see there are many people here that are part of my squad. Now, when I say sponsors and mentors and squad, I'm talking about the people that are for you, that will stand with you, and stand by you, right? My mentor, the CEO, former CEO of the Harlem Globetrotters, Manny Jackson, used to describe it as, you want the sponsor to open the door and help you find a seat at that table. You want your mentors to educate you and prepare you for the dynamics of that table. And you want your squad to cheer you on and support you as you make that shift to get to the table. Now, I'll tell you, your sponsors and your mentors may not be the same people. They may not be your supervisor or your supervisor's supervisor, right? Likewise, your squad is going to be big because those are your family, your friends, your cheerleaders, but your sponsors and your mentors may be few, and that's okay. It depends on where you are in your professional and personal journey. Now, I like to call these people my personal board of directors, and I have 12 of them. And in those 12 people, they hold me accountable. I give them my personal strategic plan. We have meetings and updates, and as they grow, I grow. And as they move, I move. And as they evolve, I evolve. And sometimes some people rotate off. And that's OK. You want your personal board of directors to work for you. It is selfish. You want to make sure that your personal board of directors is not stagnant. Because if they are, you are. So I employ you to find your sponsors, your mentors, and your squad. And if you are in a good place in your professional journey, join a young professional's personal board of directors. For as James Keller says, a candle never loses its flame by lighting someone else's. All right? All right? All right. Point number three. This is my favorite one. Fix your no. Now, you heard me. Your N-O. Fix your no. So a year ago, I was dating my farm bay, many of you know, and Joel says to me, baby, your no is broke. I was like, what? He said, you better be glad you date someone whose no isn't broke, and I'm going to help you fix and heal your no. It's OK to laugh. He was right. As, even as Vicky said, sometimes I can get a little bit overextended, right? In fact, I had many things on my schedule, programs, projects, things in the future that were crowding my schedule, weren't a part of my personal strategic plan, but were zapping my energy and taking up my time. So let's get real. I know I'm not the only one with a broke no. Who else in here has a broke no? Raise your hand. You're in a safe space. Welcome. I've been expecting you. All right. It's really important that you fix your no. It's challenging. It's hard. Saying no may create FOMO, fear of missing out, right? But it is necessary. A while ago, about two weeks ago, I was on a panel. And Tracy Newkirk, co-founder of Genesis Block, said something so profound 
so simple, and it just really stuck with me. She said, saying no to something means saying yes to you. I was like, mic drop, right? So what she said was, me saying no gives me back my yes? OK. So I encourage you to find and exercise your no. No is a complete sentence. It doesn't need rationale when you use it. And it doesn't have to feel hurtful when you, use, when you say it. In the professional context, it's going to give you clarity on your roles and responsibilities. And in a personal context, it's going to give you the big B, boundaries. All right? So now we're there. We've hit the finish line with our three points today. First, find your thing or reclaim your thing. Secondly, find your sponsors, your mentors, and your squad. And third and lastly, get rid of that broke no. So I appreciate you letting me take the baton and take us to the last lap and towards the finish line of this leadership accelerator. But remember that a finish line today is a starting line tomorrow. I wouldn't be me if I didn't leave you with just something to let you know that you're able to face tomorrow's race with strength and grace as you have today. So I love music. I run every day. And I created a leadership playlist just for you. It's on Spotify. Maggie and Vicki will share it out to each one of you so that when you feel that you have a hurdle, a challenge, or that race that you can't conquer, you can blast some music and remember that you can finish that race with style and grace. Thank you so much. Thank you for being you.